All right, now we're going to try to uh, understand what the purity of command means today. If I give a command to breathe a certain way, my body must respond and breathe that way. It happens that if I hold my hand this way, I just gave a command to put my hand up there. And now I'm going to give a command to keep it there. So the command, some of them are very subtle, but I'm going to keep it there. That's another command. Then I'll do this with the other hand. See? You know, everything, everything can happen and, and I can maintain a command. Now, when you're singing along and you want to make, a, a, let's say you have an idea about some technical thing you want to do. Let's say you want to sing... Uh, Bob, 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 Bob. I want to identify my resonance. That's my command. So my command is to identify the resonance. Bob, 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 Bob. No, I want to keep that resonance. So that's another command. So first I identify it. Bob, 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 Bob. This hand's still in the air. Bob, 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 Bob. Now I want to uh, identify it. So I go. Ba 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 ba, and I want to sing and maintain the resonance. So I go ba 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 ba. So I give another command. The problem with singing is like karate that way. Karate has so many different moves, and finally, and that's how you get better and better at it. Is because you get able to execute more and more commands. Now, when we're singing. Uh, what kind of command do I give? I don't want to give a command that tightens my throat. If I go, ah, you know, ah, all kinds of, all kinds of, of terribly mistaken ideas about what to do with the throat. You know, you have the ski slope. Ah, tongue's got to be up. Ah, don't put the tongue ba ba down. Well, isn't it funny how many great singers, uh, I've got pictures of Caruso with his tongue down. And the way the tongue goes down is with breathing, not with muscular action. And so the people that say don't depress the tongue are correct. But the way of, of, of the, the, there are other options besides just letting the tongue come way up in the back. And some people it comes up and then in order to sing their high notes stuff, they start tensing that position. So it's all about what command that I start with. I should have breathed in a way that lowered my tongue, and the back of my tongue is absolutely floppy, and the root of my tongue is loose, and my larynx went down when I took a deep breath. So I didn't give a command to do all those things. I gave a command to breathe very deeply, way down into my lower back. Then every command I give is an action, and therefore every action has reaction. So I have to find out what command I'm going to give that gives me uh, reactions that are good ones. One of them is to breathe way down my lower back, when I did that, the reaction in my throat was nothing. It let go. See? And my resonance, if I breathe way down my lower back, and I go, and I started talking, all of a sudden my voice is higher and going up just because I did an action, and every action requires an option and equal reaction. So if I want to sing up and forward, uh, I have to breathe down and back. So when I'm breathing, when I want to go here, ah, what is the reaction of that? Ma, 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 I can sing there. Now I've got to give it some color. It's too ugly and it's too nasal. So I'm going to keep this, this resonance and I'm going to give another command to go, no, all of a sudden I'm, so, I'm making all kinds of weird commands that have nothing to do with the free throat. So when I studied 65 years ago, I studied singing. I studied with people who had studied 60 years before that, and their teachers that studied like 50 years before that. So we're going back a couple of hundred years when they didn't know anything scientifically at all. And now we have all kinds of scientific information. You can look on the internet or any place and get information about what parts are, are you know, what exists up here and so forth. The truth is the greatest singers in history didn't know all that stuff. They didn't know the retinoid from a quadcoid. They didn't know anything. But they knew how to sing. And look what the composers wrote for them. Some of the parts that they sing are incredibly complicated and difficult. But they were able to do it without one piece of knowledge scientifically. All they knew was breathe and breathe in a way that relaxes the throat, as David Turner used to call it, the invisible throat, the invisible tongue, and the invisible jaw. So if I do this, how am I going to sing? Well, I said my nose, is that good or not? Uh oh, it's nasal. What am I gonna how can I sing if I if I'm that loose? Somebody go, now I'll take a deep breath behind me, ready? 
Now, what are the dangers here? The danger is I will change command and give a command to listen to myself so that I can say, oh, that's good, that's bad. There's another command. That's judgment, evaluation. Good or bad? Well, I've got to make a judgment. Therefore, I have to give a different command. I have to listen to it. That's a different command. I thought I was a singer. I was busy singing. What happened to the singing? Oh, I forgot about that. I'm giving all these other commands now. What happens to my command while I'm singing? I hope I can learn to do this and maintain this command while this one is over here doing all kinds of things. See? But we, we have to make sure that the commands we are giving, uh, you, you can almost never listen to yourself. It's, it's, it's first of all, as my old teacher, Olga Rich, used to say, your ears are the biggest liars. We do not hear what we sound like. The sound, if it's correct, goes this way. You ever look at a megaphone? Look at this megaphone. How does it work? And you've been told, let's say, focus. Nying, 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 nying. Okay, so that's the way I'm using the megaphone. Like this, right? Then they say, oh, you have to yawn. Yawn. And go, nying, 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 nying. So turn the megaphone around backwards and use it this way. Right? Let's get it big at the back and then put the voice through a little hole. Where it is. Right? Meep, 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 meep. I thought they say it works better this way. They work like that. And the question is, where would this thing go? Ideally. Well, when I breathe and this goes down, then my throat opens like that. It was uh, Herbert, Herbert Shazani used to, used to say, it was the one who said, uh, the, the true mouth of a singer is the pharynx, <laughs> right? So if I breathe, now my throat did this, and now when I sing, what command do I give? Maintain, there's another command. Let's maintain this posture of the breath that I achieve when I breathe down. Now I have to sing text. I got the same words, right? So I'm going to say, Give ye the first to me the leisure, or make a fortune in Saint Peter, fortune in Paris, if I'm child or not. Sometimes just getting the words out, uh, it takes a little practice, right? The only line of Rigoletto for the tenor is, Della mia bella, in cognita borghese, right? Della mia bella, in cognita borghese, in cognita borghese. So you really have to practice the moment so hard, so to do it fast. And you sure don't want a tight throat and a tight tongue and, uh, uh, and all this stuff when well, you've got to spit out so many words, right? Now, let's take that line from uh, the way it was written, the original text, which was Italian. In other words, you, if you can let go, you've got a better chance to get all those words pronounced, especially so that people can understand them. But I must maintain command. The command is I must maintain my free throat. I must maintain my breathing. I must maintain my support. What kind of support am I using? Right now, I'm using what they call a poncho in Italy. I'm, I'm using a lean. I'm going, ah. Oh. There are exercises for that. If I do Bob, you can see my, my I'm, I'm getting a reaction here. Bob, see that? Bob. If I maintain that, Bob. And this is very movable, and you can use it, and people have used it in different ways. I studied with Marlon DeMonaco for about six months, and he held his right in the sternal notch, right in this hole. And he would go, but he was able to maintain command. And his voice never moved in that spot. He sang Otello 467 times, plus all of the other big dramatic tenor roles that existed in Italian repertoire. I even heard him sing uh, 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 Siegmund in, in, in Valkyrie, in Stuttgart, in German. And of course, they never heard anything like it <laughs> since Lauer's Melchior and Helga Rosfagner, maybe, those guys. But since then, nobody's had a big powerhouse. I, I heard uh, Ernst Kotsu had a fantastic voice, but he, he, he died, unfortunately, at very young. I think he was 47 or something. It was a terrible loss. But anyway, the point is, I've got to learn to isolate and purify 
my commands. The, 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 the purity of command. The, the maintenance of command. I mean, how do I sustain a command? See? So I practice so much that after a while, this stays where it is while I do something else. Then I could add other commands. You know, I took karate for years. You take karate, any form of karate, and you see how you it's almost it's an empirical, physically empirical process. You're adding moves all the time, all the time, until finally, at first degree black belt, you have a whole lot of different moves you can do. At second degree, you have three years worth of new moves added, and at uh, at a, a third degree, you've got another three years of possible moves and kicks and things that you can add. It's really fascinating. And, uh, I, I mean, I, they, they, all those systems usually go up to 10th degree. Uh, some of them are so hard and so incredibly complicated that it's a, a lifetime commitment. So the ones that get higher, higher degree, 7th, 8th, ninth degree bike belts have spent an entire lifetime doing it, right? So we want to sing like that. We'd love to become a ninth degree bike, bike belt and singing. Wouldn't it be fantastic if we could give black belts and singing? But there are a number of exercises I do that, that, first of all, relax my throat and my tongue and my jaw. One of the best ones is the tongue trill. <laughs> if I do the vowels, A, A, E, O, U, I go. <laughs> I'm saying all the vowels inside without flexing my jaw or my tongue. Look at that. <laughs> I will say, how are you today? <laughs> how are you today? I'm feeling fine. Now, what am I supposed to do while I'm busy giving commands to say all those words? Much less think them. Much less act them. Give them expression. Some command somewhere is supposed to maintain this, which is the freedom of my throat. The other question is, how do I know it's there? I can't use my central perceptors. Somebody said to me, oh, I can feel it. Oh, really? You, you have to feel it to know it's there? What do you mean? You don't know the arm is there. Did you give a command for the arm to go there? Yeah, I did. Well, where is it? No, no, do it like this. Okay. No, no, do it like this. So then we need purity of command. We've got to get you so that you do this and not do something, something weird, see? So the idea is to get do that. Now I've got to maintain it. And over here, I'm going to go scratch my head, you know, whatever, you know, who knows, comb my beard, rub my tummy. What am I going to do? <laughs> the idea is that the command here remains and is pure and it is told what to do, right? So, singing is full of variable, uh, I sort of say variable commands, but almost variable everything. We sing in different languages. We have different roles. We're supposed to act those roles. We have to watch the conductor. We have partners and uh, uh, colleagues that we have to worry about what they're doing. And a lot of it's very defensive. We have to learn everybody's role, everybody's part. When I was on the stage, anybody I was on the stage with, I knew their part by memory because I never made a mistake. I didn't make mistakes on cues. I could cue everybody else. If somebody else got lost, I could cue them because I just, it was my way of feeling secure to always know exactly where I'm going to be. And then sometimes you look down, if somebody's messed up the music, give the conductor a look, the conductor will look at you and go like this, and then he'll go, and he'll bring you in. Good conductors are wonderful, right? But if I'm going, what command did I give? Now what if I can't do that? Some people can't do it. So i got to find some other uh, command to give. Let's see. What about this one? What's the command here? First of all, it's wiggle my jaw. Second of all, wiggle my jaw and keep it loose. And third command is keep it loose. Maintain like this. There are other exercises like this one. Bite the pencil lightly in the front teeth. Now, drop the pencil. Okay. Oh, no, wait a minute. Well, our commands are confused here. You should have relaxed your jaw, not opened your jaw. But you said drop the pencil, I did it. Then I was wrong. I was incomplete in my description. So sometimes you have to get a complete explanation or description of a command. Now, the idea is to put this pencil, hold it between your teeth very lightly because you don't want to flex your jaw a lot. And then what I'm going to do is drop the pencil by relaxing my jaw. So I'm do it here. My jaw's completely loose. 
Why is the loose so important? Why don't you let me give the command that I want to give, which is... Why do people do this? What, what command purpose? What purpose is this command? What is it supposed to do? Every command I give is supposed to be make things easier and better. And uh, you want some of the singers, especially some of the ladies who make themselves up and they wear gorgeous clothes and they come, their hair is beautiful. They look great. Some of the young guys look so beautiful and they walk on the stage. And then instead of saying, they go, wait a minute, guys. You went all the trouble to make yourself look good? That was a command too, wasn't it? I want to look good. And then you walk out. Did you give a command to look ugly? What happened to the command? What happened to this? Why aren't you maintaining your good looks the whole time? I care about my looks before and during and after the performance. So I want to absolutely be very clear. I want to look as good as I can. I mean, I even had hair when I was young. Can you imagine? Then I had to start wearing, I'd start wearing wigs. But the wigs look pretty good. They made me look better, let's face it. You know, bald-headed, gray beard. You know, well, I could play some old, some old geezer parts. You know, I guess. Anyway, if I go... My tongue is loose. My lips are loose. I have an even mission. Here how steady the, the, the trill is going like that. Here's the speed. It doesn't change. Therefore, I have a steady emission. So part of my command process is to keep the emission the same. So I'm supposed to sing like that. Not la what school of bel canto is that? See? So the idea is, give a command that says, I will not change my emission. I will not flex my jaw, my tongue, or my throat, and I will not change emission. You've just learned the first two rules of the bel canto school, and they're lost. People don't do that anymore. They say, they say everything, kind of everything possible to do that. They sing with their heads way back like this because then you can't flex in your throat. If I do this, I go, What command did I give? I gave a command that said, Do not flex anything in your throat, your jaw, or your tongue. And I think I got away with that one. Then automatically, I have to sing somewhere else. So that time I just continued my desire to sing. But now I'm going to figure out what am I doing when I give a command that this is, stays neutral, a total dead zone from there to there, right? I get plenty of resonance when I do that. And uh, if I do that like that, all of a sudden, uh, aha, what am I going to do? I'm going to speak a little differently. Hello, how are you today? It's so nice to see you. All of a sudden my vowels turn into sort of how oh, now, but I don't cow. See? And all of a sudden, I can't just speak with my, with my Texas accent and not like that there, you see. I'm, I'm not being sarcastic, guys, with Texans. I'm from Texas, and believe me, I used to talk like that there. When I got to New York and saw all the she said, God almighty, you Texans do not even speak a civilized language. Because <laughs> we didn't have any vowels. I didn't have any vowels. I didn't have ah. You know, we don't say, how are you? We say, hey. ye. All right, but anyway, that's another whole story. The idea, though, is to learn to sing those beautiful Italian vowels and learn to do it without any flexing of any muscle anywhere up from, you know, from there to there. And then I'm going to try. So the word is, according to Lamperti, the word that opens the throat is stai. Someone go say stai. 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 All right. I maintain the whole time the position, formation in my throat of the A vowel in the Italian word S-T-A-I. That formation in my throat, a lot of people get it by smiling or breathing in when you smile. Now my throat is now shaped like that. Caruso told Rosa Bonsell to keep a rectangle in the back of her neck all the time. See? If I do that, what shape is my megaphone? All of a sudden, I'm, I'm a band shell. I'm not a megaphone anymore. I'm a band shell. I'm like this. So what command do I give them? Think about it. And the other command that I maintained was no action in the throat, jaw, or tongue. See? Now, and when I say sty, is there an action? Not if it's relaxed. 
See? If I say it down below, stai, and say to my body, the reaction to that is that my throat is, it lets go and is, is soft. I have a soft throat. Lie. We talked about the open throats. One of them is just breathing. Lie. I'm really doing nothing. My high hyoid muscle, everything is absolutely soft. And that's only two. That's the Garcia school. Oh, how are you today? I'm feeling fine. Lamperti school. Oh, how are you today? I'm feeling fine. Then you have a Scandinavian school that really was developed because of uh, uh, Helge Rosvanger. And that is you put the tongue here, like that, and then you breathe the back of the tongue down. You anchor the front of the tongue here, and then you breathe the back of the tongue down. You go like that. All right, now, those are the three open throats. If I use, uh, let's say, the last one, and I've got to sing, uh, let's say, Italian, French, German, English, whatever, how do I maintain that, that throat? Well, you maintain it with what? With what? What did Caruso say in his book? You maintain the open throat with the power of the respiration. So the thing that maintains my throat open, whichever, th whichever open uh, I use of those three, uh, I maintain it by, by keeping my breath way down someplace in my body. So I breathe way down my lower back. And then I can go, or, or, so I have three open throats, all of them are relaxed inside, and now I've got one, two, three. See, so the first thing you know, you get so many commands going. You say, which one? When I was a student in New York, and I got in the Metropolitan Opera School. I was in it for five years, and all the great singers were there. So I, of course, interviewed constantly everybody. I studied with some of them. I studied with Tucker Delmonico. had three lessons with UC Burling. I studied with Martinelli. Probably had 20 sessions with Giovanni Martinelli. Uh, and, uh, uh, I, and then in Europe, I studied with Roswanger and Melchior and, uh, and uh, Frederick Dahlberg, a bass who was a student of a, of a student of Manuel Garcia. So I had some wonderful, wonderful education, and all they all talked about was two things. Do not use your throat for anything, and breathe like a madman in your lower back. Everything else was different. They went all, you know, they'd hold this, I'd hold that, I'm going to hold this, I'm going to sing up here, right? But the breathing was the same in everybody. And uh, when you did, and this, this, like, demand, give a command that says, do not flex. Period. So you sometimes you, you crack wide open. If you used to hold your throat, you go, la, 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 la. And so I look at you and say, good. That's very good. I said, wait a minute. Are you being sarcastic? No, no. It means you're not holding it in your throat. Now you got to learn to hold it somewhere else. Hold it? You know, a breath stop. Don't let your breath suddenly come up and, and let go because nothing's holding the tone except except the, 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 the amount of pressure you're using on your diaphragm. And people do that differently, too. If I do a breath of fire in, uh, in like a yoga, and I go, <laughs> what happens if I sing like it? La, 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 la. Is my throat loose? Yeah. See? What if I breathe like I'm, uh, like I'm, I'm uh, let's say, I'm really, I'm really, uh, want to breathe so that nobody knows it. Could you see me breathing? Could you hear me breathing? What command did I give? I give a command to breathe silently and very deep in my down my back like that. And all of a sudden when I when I need to sing, then I sing like that. La I can sing all day long on oh, one breath if I can get a good one. Every bit of tension that you do, listen how fragile the throat is. If I flex a muscle,
choking. Now I'm choking. I'm going to have to use muscles to get my throat open. So I go, That's the way I sang the bass. See? And somebody said, what are you doing? What are you doing? Professional singer named Mac Harrell, great singer actually, a student of, of a student of Manuel Garcia. He said, first of all, I sang El Jamai, and he went, and I went, and he said, wait, 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 start again. He said, would you put your face up? I'd like to put your head up. I want to see your face when you sing. I said, okay. Ready, I went. He said, wait a minute. So he came over and he put his hand under my chin like this, put my head up like this. He said, now sing it. I went, he said, that's it. That's it. You've got it. I said, what? What are you talking about? No sound. He said, because you don't breathe. Think of a drum. You take the skin off a drum, hit the, hit the skin, there's no sound. You gotta sweat that skin over a bucket of air. So we have a couple of vibrating, uh, we have a reed in there, or a double reed, right? And it vibrates like mad, but there's no sound. If I go, ha, there's no sound. But what if I take, uh, take a breath and then leave it free up here so that it can vibrate? <laughs> then I have some voice, see? And depending on my breathing, what if I breathe, uh, let's say, uh, between my shoulder blades? <laughs> See, now I'm going to breathe right here uh, against my sternum. <laughs> now I'll do Mr. Pavarotti. I'm going to breathe on my navel. <laughs> Right? Then I'm doing Lars Melchior. I'm going to breathe on the tip of my tailbone. Everything's loose all the time. What command am I giving? Think about it. And what was the order of command, the sequencing of command? First breath. And I take a breath, and at the same time, I include in the command, take a breath that relaxes your throat down and vertical. So that's, a, that's a, let's call that one command. It does several things, but it's one command. Suck the air down, uh, you know, and your larynx goes down with it because your larynx is so relaxed. So when I breathe, we like that very deep breath in my back with a very, very loose throat. My larynx goes down. I'm not the lower my larynx like that. That's why I sang when I was uh, in Bozzo. <laughs> Right? But I sang like that. And then, what command, what other command do I, do I give? I got this whole process of commands. And when you study singing, you should be learning one, two, three, four. You should be absolutely learning the whole procedure, the sequencing of A, B, C, D. Every one of those letters has a command that's important. Right? What do I do? Uh, well, first of all, there's so many different can commands that work. I can sing like Domalico did right here. Or like you see Berlin did right here. Or like Melchior did on my tailbone. Or like Jan Kipura did, sing up here on top of his head. <laughs> Jan Kipura used to sing on his molars like this. Because <laughs> Caruso said in his book, he said, some people have beautiful teeth and want to show them, but it's against all the rules of song. Never show your teeth. What? When I was in Barcelona, everybody talked about the fangs of the tiger. El tigre, right? Like this. There you go. If I cover my teeth, you go, same, same uh, lean, I go. So there used to be some rules, and the rules are commands. We're supposed to obey these rules, and we're supposed to use them and give commands. And some of these commands are, are, are really very, very easy to do and very solid. Just don't show your teeth, okay? I have a, I have a bunch of pictures right here. On this. this is Caruso demonstrating the vowels. How many teeth do you see? Ah, 
E I O U No teeth Are the corners of his mouth forward and down? Or are the corners of his mouth pulled back? Where are the corners of his mouth? See that? On all the vowels, the corners of his mouth go back. See? Even on the ooh, look at that ooh. He's still got his corners pulled back and his lower lip is still protruding. I was about to say, look at the upper lip straight across. Look at that. The upper lip is as horizontal, I guess, as he can get it. And the lower lip is protruding and the tongue is against the lower lip. See that? In other words, the greatest singer that ever lived and he's singing like this. Now, that's a command, isn't it? Do you want to obey that command? Do you want to practice so that you can do it? If you do, uh, if you sing, if you do the Pac-Man and you bite all your consonants like that, la 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 da 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 it's wrong. Why? Because it's an action. What if I do? Only the tongue is allowed to raise up, uh, separate from the lower jaw and touch your upper teeth. That's a command. So I would like to remind everyone, please, start thinking about commands and start thinking about what it is that you really are supposed to be doing. And uh, if you get with a professional singer, it's something a lot of roles and stuff for many, many years. I'm 84 this year and I'm still singing all day, every day. Right? And if you want to survive, do not use this period, at all. My old teacher, Olga Reese, would say, cut off your head and throw it in the pepper basket. You are a tenor, no brain, so anyway, put away. It's only a resonator, a big resonator, sitting on top of your shoulders, body. It only resonates. It is not for nothing. You do not sing. You sing somewhere else. And that's the idea. If I eliminate this, hello, how are you today? So I step like a ventriloquist. So like a, a ventriloquist. Hello, how are you today? So I see, I'll go downtown and get something to eat, and I'll see you later. That's how I'm supposed to sing. What am I supposed to do when I sing? See? If you do and cover and all that stuff, you're flexing muscles in your throat. You're breaking the very first rule of Del Canto, and every action is an opposite reaction. So if I do that, guess what? It causes a reaction to my breathing, and I disturb rule number two in the Del Canto school, which is no change of mission. I'm supposed to do like that. Right? All right, that's something for everybody to think about today. Okay? Have fun. It's a lot of fun. Bye.